in this rapid game that's just occurred, as the tournament is still going, see, I've played one game in this rapid tournament at leechess.org. My opponent is 2249, so quite reasonable. And I am somewhere, somewhere around that vicinity too. In this position I played CD4. And I have gone berserk mode here, which you can denote by this red line here, comparative to black's green line. So I've got five minutes for all my moves, and I've already used, after 12 moves, half my lot, plus, plus two seconds. So, um... Here, a uh, move really concerned me, but I have found that it's not that great. But there's actually two moves here I would play for black. So what do you think for black you would play here? There was one move that really worried me, but after looking at it since the game is completed... I am not too worried about it because I've got a simple move against it. So I think that black should really here develop, which they uh, continue on with their development, and they get quite a good position, actually. I think that black should um, develop here, but black um, shouldn't play the move that I thought that black would could play here. The move that worried me was what? This knight to b4. Okay? Knight to b4. Okay, that's bothering me because I'm just thinking, oh no, this is no good because of knight c2. And this is on and this is on. And that sort of thing. So I thought this was quite good. Um, and if I go back knight d3, okay, to knight b4, then black just simply goes to c2 and picks up some material at my expense. And also notice, if I just move my queen up here, then I just get this happening to my queen, the knight here. Uh, because I still have to look after rook a1, don't I? So it's quite difficult, I thought. But the the move that I parry knight b4 with is quite simple, David. And uh, you probably see it, I hope you do. It's just knight a3, and then I'm defending these sorts of squares. But it's not completely adequate. But it's okay. So black played here rook e8, okay? Now I played a3 because it was, I was going, phew. <laughs> I was going fuel. Here comes Queen B6. So what sort of move are you going to play now in my difficult position? And it's up on the board there. That's the thing. You can see it up there. So if you want to look at that, you may. And uh, here I played uh, B4. Now, I'm going to move on to part of the game with this player who's basically very strong. I'm going to move on to a section of the game where I get in trouble a little bit more, or I probably am in trouble already. Black's actually uh, developed now, haven't they? Whereas I'm still at home with this, this, and a rook or so. It's still no activity in White's camp. I played... Um, my opponent, sort of like after B4... Plays Bishop F8, and I'm going to move on now, uh, because this isn't very comfortable for me. Uh, but I've played Bishop F3 here. I might as well just go through this game. Bishop E4, and here I just go Queen out. Uh, I'm just counter-attacking this D5 pawn, but it's very tentative. It's not exactly ideal, because um, this pawn D4 is attacked twice by the knight and uh, queen, respectively. But 
the thing is, is I'm I'm not I'm just sort of like hanging in there a little bit. I'm not quite happy with this position of whites. So I have to consolidate. I have to consolidate, and so I look to consolidate in this one game only that I played on the Chess's Rapid tournament. Rook C D eight. I actually earned um fourteen points. That's not bad. I was quite impressed with that. Don't think I should earn that much. Rook d1. So now I'm defending this, of course. Now if capture on e5, then I can capture with this pawn here. They're exposing the bishop threat of bishop takes queen or bishop b6 to the queen. And so the queen would have to go back and then I can uh, continue on my merry way with knight d2 and capture this. Now notice if f6 after that, now I just can capture this and black cannot recapture, okay? So, but black can capture here and here. Oh, hold on. Yeah, my pawn's, my knight's gone, isn't it? Oh, that's right. So I have to keep visualization skills to the primo too. Now, notice that um, if knight e5, so we'll go back to knight e5, if knight e5, then d e5, and d e4, d4, I'm, I'm sort of not really analysing very well today. d4, I cannot play queen f7 check because king takes queen. <laughs> and so, because my knight is off the board, isn't it? Aren't you? You're off the board, aren't you, knight? So that's all very well. So the here in this position, um, black played f6, which is fair enough, and I went knight f3, and king h8, bishop g1. Now I'm just um, hugging this bishop on the back rank, and guess what? This bishop on g1 ends up sort of like becoming quite a good defensive piece, and also defensive piece, uh, defensive piece times two. Uh, always watching out for knight f2, which would be checkmate if this was a rook or a knight. Okay, always watching out for checks on f2, and doing a marvelous job of protecting my back rank from these things, the horizontals and the verticals. So that bishop on g1 is probably about the only best move I've played in the whole game, the whole game. And nothing but the whole game. Here's a6, knight c3, and now knight c3 is very likely and very necessary, probably. Uh, otherwise, black's just um, hanging it, hanging on to this pawn uh, with great difficulty and removing their attacker on d4 with their knight back to e7 if they want to retain this knight on e4. But it's just a little bit. Um, not the greatest. And notice if the king wasn't on h8 and it was on g8, then uh, after 97, what happens? What would happen if the king was still on g8? What happens? Just for your visualisation, what can white do there? White can do something pretty drastic. What's that? You see it? And I'm just going to take a slocky of my coffee. White would be able to play knight e4, and there is no capture to d e4 as this would be check. Why do I do that? Because I like to show some imagination or a little bit of fantasy lines in chess because these are good for your game of chess. They're good. No good would be knight d5. Instead, knight d5 would be no good as knight d5 or rook d5. So here comes knight c3, all that aside. Queen c3, rook c8, uh, with obvious intent. What the intent is, it might be what? 
what could be black threatening? <clears throat> black could be threatening night before. And I can't take back with the queen because the queen's attacked with the rook. Okay, I can't take back with, back with the queen because black's back squared bishop f8 bishop would catch my queen. And there, black would have queen for two, queen and pawn for two pieces, two minor pieces. So after rook c8, I shoved my queen to b3 again. And here comes queen b5. And uh, I kind of dropped the ball here a little bit, but I'm not sure. Rook a b1, and I just want to play a4. But I'm not really looking at this too well. But it's it, it actually activates my game somewhat, instead of me being kind of on the back foot. I even think that um, black's doing better here. So I, I believe that black's got a better position than white. Or it's possibly equal, I'm not sure, uh, without looking into it too deeply. I played he here after rook e2, a4. Was the computer telling me to play a4 next move? And here comes queen b4. And I sort of like, must admit, I didn't really consider that initially. As I am playing berserk mode, so maybe I've lost some of my time here. Here I played queen d3 with the counter measure of threatening the, the rook on e2. And the pawn is under x-ray uh, attack on b7 once the queen moves. So here's rook b2, rook b2, rook, queen b2, rook b1. And here I was expecting queen a3. And uh, we'll be entering into an endgame, I think, for sure. Because um, also, after Queen A3, I'm actually going to play another move. What would that be? And that would be Queen here to F5 attacking this rook, which is looking soft. And also the back rank is maybe looking a bit soft. So moving on, we've got Queen A2 and we have Rook B7. Now, what I said earlier on you can see that if I didn't have this lovely bishop on g1 black would be able to play moves like knight b4 and rook c1 check or queen a1 or queen b1 because the knight's in front of the the rook attack of the queen on b1 if the queen moves off this light squared diagonal so I really appreciated this bishop uh, where it's sitting it is quite nicely posted because there's a an element of chess is defense part of chess is defense not only attack but also defense and in this case these two pieces are doing a great job in fact this knight hardly even has to do anything it's like having a knight on f8 there's no mate on h2 for if i've got a knight on f1 a knight on f3 can be attacked by knight takes pawn. And then queen takes h2 checkmate, if you get what I'm saying. So this is like having, for white or black, a knight on f1, there's no checkmate on h2. Or a knight on f8, there's no checkmate on h7. So, here we go. Queen a4. Look, this is... Um, starting to waste my queenside pawns i gotta get in there so i play queen f5 with obvious intent which i'm not going to talk about rook d8 now what's your move now can, um can you figure out a move here <laughs> I'm trying to hide it from you so what's your move here now And this is the whole reason why puzzles and problems are so good for your chess. I'm not saying they're really good for my chess, but I'm saying they're good for your chess. If you do puzzles and you do problems, they might look like you never ever are going to get that position on the board. 
But what happens is you start looking for them and you start creating them and you start thinking about them and you think outside the square a little bit as well. So all these things, problems are so good and puzzles are so good for your chess even though that actual position may not ever occur in your actual games over the board. But here, puzzles and problems really help your chess in recognising important defences for yourself and important attacking moves for yourself. Okay, so now I play a certain move that I think is um, threatening something. And if you can see what I'm actually threatening when I play this move, then that's even better. So if you can visualise what I'm actually going to play and then see what the threat is, then that's very, very good. Well done. So I actually played here. So you ready for it? I hope you saw it before. Um, I hope you saw it actually on the score sheet. Rook F7. Now, what am I threatening? What am I threatening? It's very simple, so I'm not going to take long over this. I'm actually threatening Corrine takes d5, Rook takes d5, Rook takes f8, check. Now what else am I threatening? So you can use your own games. If you've got a channel or something like that, you can use your own games to show points of interest of tactical awareness. I might be threatening Queen here. I might. Um, but here comes the clue. This bishop is soft with the develop with the um with the protection of same. Now black probably should play King G eight. But black is trying to play assertively plays queen b5 now notice this beautiful bishop again this is my glory piece this is my piece of glory because look at my snug king here look at it okay look at it it's just it could just about live like that on its own it doesn't even have to do anything because these are just protecting each other so beautifully. And, of course, the knight's always defending uh, sacrifices on G1 or whatever. I'm not sure. So what is your move now? Okay, what's your move now? And I might give you a clue. I might show you actually the position uh, or the score sheet. So I hope you see my intention here. My intention is knight here? No, knight here. And see, as soon as I play knight g5, I'm threatening queen h7 check mate and i'm even threatening it of king h8 to g8 to take the rock because my knight's defending the rock isn't it see the knight's defending the rock and it's also threatening queen takes h7 checkmate with the queen and if capture then we just have simply rook f8 check and rook f8 and queen f8 checkmate. So black has to be probably um, after queen b5, I play knight g5. Now black probably has to take drastic measures here now. But what? What can black do? That's the problem, you see. The whole problem with chess is there's no queen f1 checkmate because the bishop's there. My glory piece. There's no time for knight d4, bishop d4, queen f1 check, mate, or check, and queen f3 or something check, whatever, all that sort of nonsense. There's no time because 
This is checkmate. So I actually felt like offering my opponent to draw. It's a bit naughty of me, I think, but I actually felt like offering my opponent a draw. There's only G6, that's the only move that I can see for black on the planet. G6. And thereupon G6, it's curtains after there. How can you finish this game off? How would you like to finish this game off? Actually, there's probably even quicker than what I did. I didn't really look at this very well, but I still found my che checkmate. But I'm sure you can see the checkmate in two moves, can't you? Forced checkmate in two moves. So, and I actually missed it because I just thought there's check and I love just taking things. So I played queen f6, but of course you can see rook h7 check, okay, king g8, and then queen e6 checkmate. Checkmate. So I played queen f6 check, and king g8. Now finish it off, please. Because I've dropped the ball, haven't I? I've dropped the ball. There's a few things that can happen here for uh, white. White can play a few things. But what would you play now to finish this game off where black's going to really resign? I think, I think black might resign or just allow checkmate. Is rook h7 check? Not. It's not a forced check. And here's rook d7. Well, yeah, that's um, a bit tough. Um, so here is... There's two checkmates here. Where are the two checkmates? There's checkmates to come, but there's uh, two checkmates on the spot. Okay? And one checkmate is queen h8 checkmate. And the other checkmate is rook h8 checkmate. Which one did I choose? It's like choosing which chocolate fish do you want. It is rook h8. I hope you enjoyed this wee session for you. And uh, I hope it helped you with your visualisation in chess, which is very, very important. And also um, other things too. There are other checkmates here, by the way. Um, there's queen g6 check. And the only move is, uh, well, there's rook g7 and there's bishop g7. If rook g7, then we have, um, I'm trying to do something nice here, but I can't find it. We have actually, um, after rook g7, if, if we can play this, if, uh, what was the move that I was going? Queen g6. If I could do analysis, I would. Rook g7. Then we have... Um, what was it now? Rook g6. Queen g6. Thank you for um, staying put. If you are there, thank you very, very much. We have... Um, after rook g7, we have... We almost have, I think we have it, Sparky, Rook H8 check. See that one? Rook H8 check. And then King H8. And then, it's only going to be a draw, isn't it? King, Queen H6 check. And then just King here. Uh, not Rook here as Queen takes F8 as checkmate. But anyway, that was a bit of fun. See you later. See you next time on this chess channel that I operate here for you. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.